I'm sure you've seen the videos making significant claims about the Google Cybersecurity Certificate and how amazing it is, but are they really telling the truth? I have literally not seen one video reviewing the Google Cybersecurity Certificate that wasn't sponsored by either Google or Coursera, and honestly, it's very clear in those videos that they have a ton of bias in them. Forget that. I'm going to give you my honest perspective on the certificate in the only review video that isn't sponsored. And trust me, they really tried, but I kept declining their offers. So it's pretty likely that if you have any interest in cybersecurity, that you've heard about the Google Cybersecurity Certificate. It's fairly new to the certification or training game in the industry, but of course, it has the name Google attached to it, so people are automatically going to give it some credibility. If we look at what they say on the website, it says it's going to prepare you for a career as a cybersecurity analyst with a professional certificate from Google. Learn job-ready skills that are in demand, like how to identify common risks, threats, and vulnerabilities, as well as the techniques to mitigate them. You don't need prior experience to qualify for the certification, and it's provided entirely online with on-demand training, which means that you can go at your own pace. Some of the jobs they say you can qualify for after you complete the program are cybersecurity analyst, security analyst, SOC analyst, information security analyst, IT security analyst, and cyber defense analyst. Additionally, they talk about when you complete the certificate, you'll get exclusive access to Career Circle to help finding jobs, but when I actually Google this service, it says they don't charge anybody anyways. This aspect is outside of the scope of what we're going to talk about in this video, but I do find that pretty interesting. Before we dive deeper into this video, I just want to show you that I have actually gone through this program and completed the certificate. If we scroll down here, you'll see my main certificate for the entire program. We'll see the different courses and see that I've completed every single one of them with a 100% score. The reason why I show you that is because some people are talking about the program without ever having looked at it deeper, and the majority of the people talking about it definitely didn't complete the certificate. That's not me though, because I did it. All right, now that's out of the way, let's talk more about the actual training aspect. For starters, there's eight different courses that are included with the certificate. All right, so we're on the certificate website. If we scroll down, we'll see the courses that are included with the certificate. So first of all, it starts out with Foundations of Cybersecurity. This talks about recognizing core skills and knowledge needed to become a cybersecurity analyst, identify how security attacks impact business operations, explain security ethics, identify common tools used by cybersecurity analysts. Here you're going to learn to identify the primary threats, risks, and vulnerabilities to business operations, examine how organizations use security frameworks and controls to protect business operations, define commonly used security information and event management, or SIM tools, and use a playbook to respond to threats, risks, and vulnerabilities. Course 3 is Connect and Protect Networks and Network Security. You're going to define the types of networks and components of networks, illustrate how data is sent and received over a network, understand how to secure a network against intrusion tactics, and describe system hardening techniques. The next course is Tools of the Trade, Linux and SQL. You're going to learn to explain the relationship between operating systems, applications, and hardware. Compare a graphical user interface or a GUI to a command line interface. Navigate and manage the file system using Linux commands via the Bash shell. And use SQL to retrieve information from a database. The next course is Assets, Threats, and Vulnerabilities. You're going to learn to classify assets, analyze an attack service to find risks and vulnerabilities, identify threats such as social engineering, malware, and web-based exploits, and summarize the threat modeling process. The next one, sound the alarm, detection and response. You're going to identify the steps to contain, eradicate, and recover from an incident, learn to analyze packets to interpret network communication, understand basic syntax components of signatures and logs in intrusion detection systems, IDSs, and network intrusion detection systems, NIDS, tools. And you're going to perform queries in security information and event management, or SIM tools, to investigate an incident. The next course is automating cybersecurity tasks with Python. You're going to learn to explain the Python programming language and how it's used in cybersecurity. You're going to learn to create new user-defined Python functions. You're going to learn to use regular expressions to extract information from text. And you're going to practice debugging code. And then the final course is putting it to work, prepare for cybersecurity jobs. Here you're going to determine how and when to escalate a security incident. You're going to learn to engage with the cybersecurity community. You're going to learn about finding and applying to cybersecurity jobs. And you're going to prepare for job interviews. So you can see, that sounds like a pretty tall order for a lot of these courses to accomplish. Now let's talk about what each course includes. First of all, it has videos led by Google instructors to teach new concepts, introduce the use of relevant tools, 
offer career support, and provide inspirational personal stories. You're going to get readings that build on the topics discussed in the videos, introduce related concepts, share useful resources, and describe case studies. There's discussion prompts to explore course topics for better understanding and allow you to chat and exchange ideas with other learners in their discussion forums. You're gonna get self-review activities and labs to give you hands-on practice in applying the skills that you're learning and allow you to assess your own work by comparing it to a completed example. Now you can theoretically say that you did these and just keep moving. They don't actually validate it. There's interactive plugins these encourage you to practice specific tasks and help you to integrate knowledge that you've gained in the course. You get in-video quizzes to help you check your comprehension as you progress through each video. You get practice quizzes that allow you to check your understanding of key concepts and provide valuable feedback. And you get graded quizzes that demonstrate your understanding of the main concepts of a course. You have to score 80% or higher on each graded quiz to obtain the certificate and you can take a graded quiz multiple times, really as many as you want, to get a passing score. They don't limit the overall amount of times, but they do require that you only take it a maximum of three times within 24 hours. Also, the quizzes aren't proctored, so you can just take them whenever you want. If you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to leave a like so that YouTube knows you enjoy the content, also that it's helpful for other people. Make sure to check out the description for more resources related to this video, and let's get back to the content. All right, so let's talk about what it takes to actually get the certificate. First of all, you have to take all eight courses. You have to pay the course certificate fee, so Coursera costs $49 per month or $399 per year. They estimate that the certificate's gonna take you about six months if you study seven hours per day, so that's roughly about $294 if you pay monthly. Now keep in mind that when I completed everything in about four days, it actually just awarded me the certificate without forcing me to pay, so I'm not really sure if that's an actual requirement. You also have to complete all the assignments. There's no penalty for late assignments, so if you skipped over something, and then you came back and then you did it again, no big deal. Also have to pass all the graded quizzes in all eight courses with a score of 80% or better. All right, so now I wanna shift gears and talk about each one of the courses in this certificate. Course one is Foundations of Cybersecurity. Now typically any certificate, certification, or training course starts out with an introductory section. That way you don't get overwhelmed right out of the gate. This is no different. I actually don't mind starting with this basic information, but the information that was included in this section is probably way more basic than you need to actually get started. Another problem I have with this section is for an introduction course, I expect there to be a discussion about core or foundational information, like how networks operate. None of that kind of information was discussed in this section, and that's a huge miss in my eyes, since a typical student is gonna have very little knowledge when they first start out. Course two is play it safe, manage security risks. Something that you'll see in many of the courses and what's covered in this program uses something called the CISSP exam domains to drive the discussion. I'm not saying that the domains aren't accurate in the CISSP, but they basically start drifting your attention to another certification that's much higher level right away in the course. You'll learn more about threats, risks, and vulnerabilities, and that's always a good discussion. This course also introduces security frameworks like the NIST RMF or Risk Management Framework and OWASP. Finally, things wrap up talking about the incident response process. Just like with the first course, everything is conceptual and you still don't get exposure to the foundational information that I would expect. Course three is connect and protect, networks and network security. Now this section starts going into some of the TCP IP knowledge that you need and more lab exercises are required. The labs are all document based like reading a raw network log, but there's no hands on experience with tools. Course four is tools of the trade, Linux and SQL. Up to this point, there are definitely issues with the program and it really doesn't get any better. One of the major problems that I saw with this course is there's a huge focus on the Linux operating system and literally a sentence or two talking about Windows. Are you kidding me? Windows is one of the most widely adopted operating systems of organizations that you're gonna have to protect and they barely even mention it in passing. It's literally like they tried to shove SQL into this section to disguise the fact that they don't talk about Windows at all. It must be because Google hates Microsoft or something, but seriously, what a joke. At least they give you a few hands-on examples with Linux. They also mention Kali Linux here, but they don't show you anything about it, so it's just another word to you. Course five is assets, threats, and vulnerabilities. This course spends a lot of time talking about asset classification, roles regarding data, OWASP, and the PASTA threat model framework. I wouldn't really expect this section to be crazy in depth for a beginner certificate, so I have no issue really either way. Course six is sound the alarm detection and response. This course is all about incident response. Luckily, there are some hands-on labs where you can use tools like Wireshark, Splunk, and a few others. The labs themselves are very beginner level, but this is one of the better courses of this program because you actually get exposure to the tools. Course seven is automate cybersecurity tasks with Python. 
Overall, in my eyes, this is the best course from this program. You'll learn the basics of Python, including writing basic Python scripts and how to debug them. My major concern with Python throughout this course is that Google has embedded a strong impression that Python is a skill that you won't be successful unless you have. They really try to convince you of this and that's dangerous for people that are new to the industry because frankly, that's not true. Additionally, they really overload this section which further emphasizes the idea that Python is mandatory in cybersecurity. What are you doing, Google? Seriously. Course eight is put it to work, prepare for cybersecurity jobs. Something that they do in this course that's not always talked about or covered is escalations. I think that's actually an important discussion to have with newer or more junior people, so I appreciate that. They also talk about the STAR method for interview questions and how to develop a resume. Although I have very strong opinions on topics like these, I think it's a positive thing to at least include content on them. In general, what's covered is fairly basic in this course. Question of the day, why do you wanna work in cybersecurity? Let me know down in the comments section below. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for, what's my opinion on the Google Cybersecurity Certificate? Honestly, it belongs in the trash. Although there's some things that I can appreciate in this course, it's really one of those things that they would have to recreate to even get close to getting my seal of approval. They don't do a good job of teaching you the core knowledge that you need. They completely ignore the Windows operating system. They overemphasize the need for Python to be successful and other issues that at this point aren't worth talking about because of those glaring issues. Additionally, employers aren't asking for this certificate and Google themselves even tries to push you towards the Security Plus Next, which is a way more valuable certification from an employment standpoint. I just don't know why vendors keep trying to push cybersecurity certifications as the first step when it relies heavily on knowing the foundational information first. It makes no sense if you use logic. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.